So how is the Trudeau government doing in the eyes of Canadian voters? Well, let's take a look at the polls with CTV's Michelle Boyer and pollster Nick Nanos. Over to you, Michelle. Thanks very much. It is now time for Nanos on the Numbers, the final one for 2019. You pumped? You, I'm so pumped. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, what a year it's been, eh? And we went through a federal election campaign. There was blackface. There was SNC. It was a busy political year. And if we look at the numbers, uh, a bit of a roller coaster for everybody, Nick. Absolutely. No one was immune <laughs> from the ups and downs of... Uh, of public support over the last year. And you know, it's interesting at the beginning of the year, you can see that the Liberals started off in majority territory at mm -hmm. around 39% with about a six or seven point advantage over the Conservatives. But that you can see the Liberals were ahead, then the Conservatives were ahead, the Liberals were ahead, then the Conservatives were ahead, Liberals, Conservatives. That sounds and exactly what I was saying every day during the campaign. Oh, yeah. They, they were going back and forth constantly. Exactly. And, you know, even now, you know, we close out the year mm -hmm. and the Liberals only have a marginal advantage over the Conservatives. It's about three percentage points. So, you know, for the good news for the Conservatives, as a party at least, mm -hmm. is that they're still within striking distance. And for the Liberals, you know, although they uh, have, a, you know, the greatest number of seats in the House of Commons, the reality is, is that when it comes to popular support, they're still not much more popular than they were during the election. Right. So uh, I think it's a bit of a cautionary tale for the Liberals. They should not be overconfident in terms of uh, where they stand with Canadians. And I think it also speaks to how, what the Conservatives have to do next time around if they continue to stay at this kind of separate the separation that they have from the liberals yeah for the conservatives what's clear in the polling numbers is that they have a pretty strong base of support mm -hmm. but this isn't about coming second this is about winning so if you're a conservative partisan or a conservative strategist you have to be thinking about okay so we have a base of support who can we have as a leader that can allow the conservatives to challenge the liberals and to have a greater number of Canadians be open to voting conservative. And I think, so it's, it's not about consolidating the base for the conservatives. Mm -hmm. It's about trying to build a new coalition that can challenge the liberals and be a new government in waiting. And you know, a lot of what the conservatives obviously were trying to do was beat Justin Trudeau. What Andrew Scheer is now suffering from, obviously be uh, resigning as leader because he didn't beat Andrew, uh, because he didn't beat Justin Trudeau. Uh, Justin Trudeau's approval has really changed. Yeah, well, you know, what's interesting compared to the, the beginning of the year that about uh, almost six out of every 10 Canadians thought that he had the qualities of a good political leader. And you can see kind of that, I'll call it the SNC Lavalant little negative trough yeah. that happened uh, throughout part of the year where, uh, where his positive numbers went down. But, uh, you know, he's, he's closed out at, you know, in the mid 50s in terms of uh, people thinking he has the qualities of a good political leader. Much lower than it was in the first three years of his mandate. Right. But uh, still a fairly decent number uh, for Justin Trudeau on this particular measure. Andrew Scheer is, I'm looking at these numbers here, and this is, uh, this is really, I think, telling, especially since November. It has been, his numbers have just been sliding right down as far as approval. You know, it's interesting, you know, at the beginning of the year, there was still a significant proportion of Canadians that uh, didn't have really strong opinions about Andrew Scheer. He was a bit of a work in progress yep. and they were open to kind of learning more about him. But what's clear is that when we look at the period as Canadians focused more and more on Andrew Scheer, as he got his message out, as he was in the news and talking to Canadians, you know, as opposed to his positive numbers going up, what we've seen is a decline in the proportion of Canadians that uh, thought that he had the qualities of a good pol good political leader and there's been a noticeable decline in the period after the election right so uh, you know it's interesting the conservative numbers relatively stable still within uh, what I'll say challenging distance of the uh, of the liberals mm -hmm. but then when you look at Andrew Scheer you know the gap between him and uh, Justin Trudeau widening and his brand just not being as strong as it was uh, even just a couple months ago. Do you think that it's because of the election, his inability to properly answer those questions that kept coming up time and time again? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that the Conservatives did win more votes than the Liberals. Yeah. So they technically, you know what, in another type of democracy, they would have won the election. For sure. Right? Uh, and the other thing is, is that Conservative support is still relatively strong. So the only thing in this equation that's different are Andrew Scheer's numbers. They've gone down since the last election or through the last election. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, I think it has to do with how he handled or mishandled a lot of those questions. That's right, and those questions are being asked right now to figure out how to do it properly next time. Quickly, 
Jagmeet Singh, a lot of people were expecting him uh, and the NDP to do a lot better, but that didn't happen. How is he doing personally? Well, he's doing personally actually quite well than before. You know, when we look at the trend line leading up to the election, it was like a flat line. Yeah. It wasn't dead, but just a flat, <laughs> Not straight much. line. And then you look at the election and those numbers pop and they jump and uh, they're still pretty positive. He did so well in the debates. He did well in the debates and uh, he did better and the party did better than anticipated, even though in the ironic twist, you know, he did better than, he didn't do as well as Andrew Scheer. Andrew Scheer resigned. Right. So, uh, but still a good close for Jagmeet Singh. All right. Well, listen, thanks so much for doing this. Our final one of 2019. Really appreciate your time. It's been fun. All right. See you in 2020.